Santa Hernández, eh, aquí es mi casa. La empresa entró aquí con nosotros en nuestro pueblo, pues creo que más que todo nosotros fuimos engañados. Poco a poco nuestra gente empezaron a vender sus tierras y así. Y hay quienes que no querían vender, pues entonces como donde ya tenían, venían unos de los trabajadores de la empresa que andaban negociando el terreno y yo le decía de que yo no quería vender mi terreno. La última vez que vinieron conmigo me dijeron de que si yo no iba a entregar mi documento, pues ellos iban a entrar a trabajar. Así eh, yo voy a, voy a ir a buscar una ley, ¿será que no hay una ley por mí? Le dije. Y ella me dijo, y usted sola no puede hacer nada, me dijo. Como nosotros aquí somos gente eh, pobres y nosotros no tenemos eh, recursos económicos para ir. Eh, a buscar una ley, pues eh, entonces ahí es donde a mí me convencieron. Nos preocupa porque nos están levantando pues en nuestro lugar, en donde nosotros nacimos, donde ya crecimos y eso es lo que no es bueno para nosotros. The mining issue here in Guatemala with regards to Gold Corp's operation in San Marcos region in San Miguel Ixtabacan, it's an important fight right now. Gold Corp is a huge mining company from Canada. Their head office is in Vancouver. Our laws are allowing it to be here. We, we don't have very strict mining laws abroad, um, so they can basically operate however they want outside of Canada. There are babies and there are elderly people that are passing away, that have skin rashes, that have hair loss, that no longer have access to water because the, the mine is using 250,000 liters an hour for their operation. After the peace accords, um, the mining codes really changed in Guatemala and we saw a lot more companies like Gold Corp 
coming in without consulting uh, Indigenous communities and um, without conducting, you know, environmental impact assessments or all these things that would typically be expected. So the case in Gold Corp is a really um, cogent example of communities who have received little information, let alone uh, given consent. The International Label Organization says that before any large projects or mineral extraction happens on Indigenous lands, the local communities must be consulted. And this is something that has not happened. The government of Guatemala did not comply with these international standards, as well as Gold Corp did not comply with them. As soon as the um, Gold Corp kind of obtained the Marlin mine, the first thing they did is go to individual landowners, and a lot of them weren't even told what the land was going to be used for. In public relations way, it was just said that they were it was sold, but a lot of people were told, well, you know, your land already belongs to Gold Corp. You can either leave and get some money, some compensation for the land, or we can evict you. Consentimiento mío, agarró la mina a un terreno. Lo circuló, pasó una carretera en medio. Aunque yo quiera ir, no pueden, no pueden entrar. Lo tiene invadido. La seguridad dice no tiene derecho para entrar, pero es mi terreno, entonces, ¿por qué? Ellos dicen propiedad privada. Como yo no puedo poner un rótulo y decir que es mi propiedad, que ellos me lo agarran. Marlin Mine is, um, has a huge open pit mine, so um, a lot of the cyanide is drained into the water. Every mine has a huge impact in that they use up so much water. Um, water is already a scarce resource in Guatemala. Um, they use up so much water and they contaminate so much land around them as well. The water just is, is no good for crops, it's no good for people, it poisons people. In Guatemala, the, the agriculture is already like very, very pressured. Um, like if there's any decrease in agriculture, then that means that people, more people are starving. For many people in San Miguel, Ixtabacán, and Sipacapa, their land is, is their livelihood. It's, it's their lifeline because they, um, you know, they grow their crops and they grow and they depend on the water from that area. Um, you know, there's no infrastructure in Guatemala for people to be able to depend on um, public clean water from wherever, right? So where these people live, that's, that's the water that they need to drink. Often the problem is that there's also a displacement that, you know, people were there doing something before the mine went in and they may be losing agricultural land, they may be losing water supplies. Um, and in some cases you can have thousands and thousands of people being displaced for the sake of a few hundred jobs. And both Sipacapa and San Miguel are subsistent economies for the most part. They're, they're farmers, so they're not people who necessarily have typically depended on a wage employment, right? So these companies coming in and taking away the livelihood really um, force these communities to be dependent on um, a mining company that isn't sustainable and can't provide employment for the whole population. Once these people are displaced, um, they end up being poor people in Guatemala City. They, they end up, being, they end up be basically being refugees, you know, landless refugees. It's received some international attention, but regardless, Gold Corp really still operates under this just complete denial of things. And we know that there have been a lot of health impacts because of um, Gold Corp as well. A lot of kind of mysterious rashes among children and 
and they weren't here before the mine. It really appears to be linked to the water. They've responded to that saying, well, people have poor nutrition, poor health care, poor hygiene. People's washing habits didn't change dramatically in the meantime, but the, the water quality seems to have. A terrifying aspect of this is Gold Corp actually has clinics there, so they have hired clinicians who would never say, oh, you know, this is caused by contamination in the water. In San Miguel, Ishtoacan, and, and San Marcos, and, you know, around the, the Gold Corp mine, but also around El Astor, they're finding contamination in the rivers, they're finding um, houses being destroyed you know, by the blasting and the heavy equipment. Gold Corp's response to these issues, I think, is consistently to, to try and brush them off. If a local group did water sampling and found some contamination, Gold Corp will say, well, we took a lot of samples and we didn't find any contamination. I mean, and, and we've challenged them to say, look, if, if somebody finds contamination, what you need to do is find out where it's coming from, not pretend it's not there. Their response to the houses being cracked from the vibration is that, well, they're poorly made houses. And yet, the houses weren't cracking and falling down before anyone got there. <laughs> Gold Corp's reaction has always been to just flat out deny these claims. And it's, it's so, um, it's really frustrating, I think, to look for, for communities because you know, everything they claim, it's, it's not good enough, right? No, um, no account that they can give is, is considered legitimate. My family was uh, fleeing political persecution and um, I actually have some uncles who, who were killed um, because of the Civil War and you know it's, you, you tell people about it and um, I think people don't realize the extent to which people were policed and punished for any action that could be considered even slightly progressive. I think one of the big issues internationally is that other countries don't necessarily have the capacity, whether it's the, the technical capacity or the legal frameworks or just the people that, with the expertise to do that to you know to inspect mines to and to enforce the laws that they do have. Well it's commonly understood that 98% um, of crimes in Guatemala go unpunished so with that kind of impunity rate um, it's you know it's it, it's easily understood you know why people don't necessarily think that they have rights that they can, that will be protected. Pretty much everyone in Guatemala um, has, you know, family members who, who were affected, who were forced to flee or who died. You know, the, the amount of, of, of fear that, you know, this is, that has lingered because of that, I think is, can't be underestimated. I think that in some respects, uh, Canadian mining companies operate at the, the highest levels possible. But they do operate in difficult circumstances, um, and it is an ever-changing environment. But there are some mining companies that uh, clearly are not making effort to operate within um, internationally accepted guidelines. And I think that's to the detriment of our industry, and I think it's to the detriment of our nation. So there's a, a reputational damage that happens to the industry, but they are also our flag bearers around the world. What people in 
Honduras, Guatemala, Mexico understand about Canada uh, largely derives, or in some part at least, derives from how Canadian companies operate in those, in those countries. We're facilitating these corporations getting their money together and institutionalizing themselves here and going international. So, you know, if we didn't have all of these companies making their homes in Canada, getting money through the Toronto Stock Exchange, getting money from the Canadian government through the Canada Pension Plan and, and uh, Export Development Canada and so on, then we could maybe take a little bit more laissez-faire attitude but the fact is we're actually supporting these activities in many ways. The way it works now is these companies have Canadian Pension Plan money and they're funded by the Canadian Pension Plan and the Government of Canada supports these companies like to the hilt. They really support these companies. The majority of people that are investing in Gold Corp live in Canada. You know, the Canadian Pension Plan, how many people pay into the Canadian Pension Plan? It's a public fund and they have unbelievable amount of shares in Gold Corp. You know, there is no Canadian law governing mining companies internationally. So um, it's, it's pretty ad hoc. There have been some um, attempts at, at changing that. And um, Bill C-300, for example, is um, a bill that's being debated right now. C-300 is a relatively simple bill, fairly modest. And, but what it says is if a corporation falls outside of corporate or environmental uh, responsibility standards, then um, uh, taxpayer funding would be withdrawn through EDC and Canada Pension Plan would not be allowed to invest in that company. The government hasn't been terribly responsive to public pressure. Their response to things like this bill that's, this private member's bill that's in the, in the House right now has been, has been completely negative. Very little happens uh, that's contrary to the uh, best interests of the mining industry. Um, and, uh, and I'm a kind of a classic example of uh, what they perceive not to be in their best interest. The pushback on this bill has been enormous. Canada has been notorious in um, lack of implementation. I mean, and that's evidenced by the fact that over 70% of mining companies are based in Canada. And, you know, there obviously is some tangible benefit from, from being in Canada then. There is no political quarter in Canada, whether it's uh, from the Prime Minister's office on down, into which the mining companies cannot reach and reach effectively. Canadian embassies have been supporting mining companies in some of the most egregious conflicts that we've, that we've seen. You know, people are being taken hostage and shot at and so on. And there's the Canadian ambassador having a cocktail party with the, hosting a party with the, with the mining company. The, the ambassador of Canada and um, other kind of uh, Canadian financing institutions have really championed mining as this great thing for development in, in Guatemala and other Latin American countries and are um, really um, exploiting you know, this history of, of violence that these communities have experienced. Um, but you know, on top of that are still saying, you know, look at us, how, how great we are for you know, helping these countries develop. So there is like this, this um, a lot of rhetoric and I think people, um, you know, that rhetoric really works to the advantage because you know, then they have the support of, of average Canadian people who think, um, well, you know, people need jobs. Right now, Gold Corp has claimed about um, 85% of the area in San Miguel Ixtabacang and are still fighting to have that 15% of Sipacapa, which of course the community has been able to fend off so far because of their local referendum and international attention.
And so they're starting to get this momentum, this movement towards, um, towards demanding their rights. Hace como cinco años que empezamos con la cuestión de la lucha y creo que ha sido un logro para nosotros aquí en Zipacapa. Hasta el momento, como Zipacapa ha dicho no, y lo que ellos tratan la manera ahorita es de, de convencer a la gente. Aproximadamente unos 15 promotores trabajando en las comunidades de Zipacapa. ¿Qué es el trabajo de los promotores? Es ir a platicarles, mire señores, la, la mina no trae ni una contaminación. Eh, la táctica de la empresa es siempre seguir engañando a la gente, decirle que es un desarrollo, que el verdadero desarrollo es eso. Nosotros como resistencia que somos enemigos del desarrollo, pero realmente vemos en San Miguel que no se ve nada de un desarrollo. Eh, lo que vemos es que le están, se están, eh, le están acabando los cerros, están terminando con los árboles, están terminando las fuentes de agua. Ahí sí le estamos viendo con nuestros propios ojos porque está cerquito. Y aprovechando de que la gente, la pobreza que de la gente, entonces ellos dicen como que se convencen. ¿verdad? Eh, eh, pero la estrategia de la municipalidad es de, de decir a la gente, Claro, eh, el dinero está bien, pero mientras que tenemos el agua, el, el aire puro, verdadero, como siempre tenemos, porque para qué tener dinero si vivir en una, en una contaminación legalmente, no podemos vivir en un área, ¿vale? que no podemos tomar un pasito de agua, el dinero se puede tomar, se puede comer, el oro no se puede, pero sí una mata de fruta, eso sí se puede comer. I think the first step would be to figure out how much we actually need, you know? And then we can plan accordingly. Um, because right now, everything is based very much on, you know, just um, getting as much as we want. Like, what, what dictates um, a company mining for gold? The price of gold. And what is the price of gold? It's, it's just an abstract, absurd thing, right? It's just whatever people will pay for gold. So that isn't what should be driving mining. Um, Mining should be driven by need. I think there's there's a range of, of possibilities, and uh, they range from you know talking to a member of parliament and trying to support Bill C-300, and then other bills that will be introduced. Whether it's emails, whether it's uh, letters, whether it's interviews, whether it's you know sit down in the constituency, accost him or her in a in a restaurant, whatever. Um, it's, it seems to be the only language that the government members actually do understand, um, you know, raw political power. Helping to pressure the companies directly to say, look, we know what's going on here. Um, we would like you to change your behavior in a certain way. And, and that does have some effect. And, and I think ultimately um, a lot of it comes back to what happens on the ground, whether it's in Canada or or internationally, and the the communities and the organizations that are involved in these in these struggles need a lot of support as well. Eh, nosotros no estamos haciendo nada en contra de la empresa. Más es solo eh, estamos reclamando un derecho porque nosotros pensamos de nuestros niños, 
en nuestros futuros, pues, porque nosotros cuando hicimos, eh, cuando construimos nuestra vivienda, pues, nosotros fuimos a luchar en las fincas. Whether we like it or not, we're all involved, essentially, you know, as Canadian citizens, as voters, as taxpayers, um, as workers who've paid into the Canada Pension Plan, you know, we're all, we're all part of this now, one way or another. El mensaje que podemos enviar a Estados Unidos, a las autoridades de Estados Unidos, a las autoridades de, de Canadá, por si ustedes podían transmitir a ellos, que respeten las decisiones de un pueblo. Cuando un pueblo dice no y no, 